welcome to I See the Light. I'm Prophetess Regina. I'm the light and I'm back with another one. God bless. God bless. I hope this is reaching you all in good spirits, high vibrations, and you're not letting anybody down your light. Oh, Lord. Y'all, I have allergies acting up. Oh. Yeah. I don't normally have allergies. I used to have them really bad when I was in my early 20s and stuff. But I haven't had any allergies in years. But I guess because I've been out here so much, all up in these uh, park and by these trees and then the rain, it hit me so hard yesterday. Well, it actually hit me the night before my nose got stopped up and I took a Benadryl. But today I took, I had to go buy me some allergy medicine and I went over to my son's house and took about a three hour nap to get out of out from outside since it's 88 out here mm -mm, it don't feel like it feel like it's it feel like 108 to me especially when your nose is stopped up because I'm like please Lord Jesus don't give me a summer cold that's all I need I don't need a summer cold I just left my son's house you know of course he gets off at five I want to clear out of there so that he can have his place to himself I'm back out here again at the park. I'm tired of this. I really am tired of it, but what can I do? Um, I didn't even put any lipstick on, any eyes, I mean, lip gloss or anything, because I'm just going to blow it right off. So if I have a sneeze attack, forgive. But I'm going to go ahead and get it in. I don't have much. I wrote a few things this morning. Thank goodness I did. So that, um... I wouldn't have to, uh, I guess, work so hard this evening. Really, what I want to talk to you today about is praising God, of course. We're going to praise God. I'm not going to leave God out. That's not what we're doing. I'm not trying to. Excuse me. My nose. It's my nose. My nose. God, I want to thank you for another day. Yeah, regardless of what we go through, we're going to thank God for another day. Dear Heavenly Father and Holy Spirit, I thank you. Oh, I thank, I thank the Holy Spirit. I thank the Heavenly Father. Yes, I thank Lord Jesus Christ for another day. I praise your holy name. So, <coughs> I thought I had a tissue right there. I love a diaper too. Oh, man. I don't like being sick. My ears are clogged up. mm mm, -mm. This air feel good. If I cut this car off, I'm going to be so miserable. I'm going to run all my gas off. <laughs> so much going on, Lord Jesus. So please, Lord, please. Have mercy on me, Lord. <sighs> Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you. Let's go ahead and say a prayer. And I should please to respect the Lord and God bless. <clears throat> If I didn't do my intro, forgive me. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus, your Lord, our Lord, your Savior. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't have much to say today, Lord, so I ask the Holy Spirit to step in at this time and cover us. I ask to be covered with the blood of Jesus at this time. I ask that you hear our cries at this time for relief in whatever situation is a burden for us today. Yeah. Sometimes the load is so hard to carry, Lord. Give us more muscle. Give us more stamina. Release us from our toxic ways so that we may flourish and grow like flowers and trees and the garden and the, the garden of Eve, I guess. The garden of Eden. Yeah. But Lord Jesus, I ask you to keep us strong enough to fight against the principalities of evil, Lord Jesus. Because they are out here really trying to take down your people. I pray over over wars. So much money spent on wars, Lord, that could be helping people. 
I don't understand the situation of war, Lord. Why war? We ask that all of the people involved in such destruction be handled in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I ask that um, situations with people in their um, homeless situations, that, that the doors be open to them so that they can find housing. I pray for the sick, the sick, Lord Jesus. I pray for the sick people in the hospital fighting for their lives today, be that adults or children. Bless the children, Lord Jesus. We haven't asked for a blessing over the children lately. Cover the children um, as they go to school and as they play outside. Just protect our children at all time because Satan is lurking, trying to, to steal our children. We cover all these things in the blood of Jesus. Our family situations. Our, um, our relationships, Lord Jesus, cover in the blood of Jesus. I thank you so much, and I pray these prayers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. And amen. <laughs> so today is September the 20th, 2023. And before I get started, I want to go ahead and tell my quick story. So I was at the store today, and I went and bought a few items so I could make me a salad. I diced up really small. That was good because I said... I've been checking out like videos on how they chop up things really small and like when my son cooks he chops up all his vegetables really small um, when he makes he's really good at like tacos and he can make some bomb tacos so he when he dices up all his vegetables he dices them up super small like when my son cook I told him I said you can't even hear him in the kitchen cooking you don't hear nothing moving around you know you might hear a a cabinet door every now and then but you don't hear him dicing up the food or nothing and you be like when is the food gonna get ready but when it's ready it be bomb <laughs> it be bomb anyway back to what i was saying so i made me a salad a turkey salad with egg olive onion red onion um tomato cheese and i put a little bit of uh those little fried onion things that come in a bag for salads that was pretty good and i lightly i be drenching i noticed sometimes i be so heavy handed with the ranch but i lightly put some ranch on there and i diced it up pretty tiny and uh that was delicious so that's what i had and i also stopped eating yesterday so i went i went a whole 16 hours of fasting thank you lord jesus without eating or drinking anything as of yesterday so now i'm back on it today because i already ate and here it is going on five so i'm not going to eat no more tonight and so i didn't eat until like 11 this morning so i went a 16 hours and i thank you lord jesus i made it so what i looked up today Oh, yeah, and another thing. Oh, so back to the story. So let me make it quick. I was in the store getting my stuff, and I ran across this lady on her buggy, and I said, and she's like, I had to move out of her way, whatever. Anyway, white lady was in my way and didn't care. was on the phone and didn't care. I just stood there and waited for her to get out of the way. But when the lady came my way, I move out the way. I'm common courtesy for everybody. I acknowledge people. I don't be in my world where I'm uh, I'm talking and I'm looking on the chef and I'm on the phone with someone like yeah and I told and they're always gossiping about somebody else's business like yeah Henry and her they they their son I've been trying to tell him he's just a menace he's such a I mean, he's such a bad seed yes uh -huh, he's always I'm like talking about something that has nothing to do with you that's what they be doing but anyway she was telling me I, was her, I said these groceries hi anything and she's like yes they are girl she said i'm making some i got some brown beans she said i'll be trying to stretch out a meal i said i know i said it's like now you gotta pick what day you want to eat it's the groceries are so high or now you gotta like we might need to eat every other day because the groceries are so high and she's like i got girl i got some brown beans on the stove i said that sounds good what you gonna make with it she put her head down she said girl a pork chop i said ain't nothing wrong with that and then she said, yeah. And so she told me, she, she said, I'm buying these vegetables to cook with it. Going to stretch it out. We're going to have to eat some leftovers. Try to stretch it out. She had one, one broccoli, one whole little broccoli that she was going to share with somebody. And just everything was small. And I was like, man, that's sad. And I said, boy. So she said, you heard about Ukraine, right? And I'm like, no, what about Ukraine? So I looked it up. 
I don't know exactly what she was talking about, but I just looked it up before I got on here just so I could see. Forgive me for my snorting and stuff. Um, America has sent $75 billion over to Ukraine to, to help them out in the war finances and all kinds of different things that they're using. They financed Ukraine $75 billion. That's what I said. That's what it said on Google when I asked, well, how much money has the United States sent to Ukraine for the war or to subsidize or whatever they're doing? I don't know. That's pretty damn sad when it's hungry, homeless, people, children are homeless with their families sitting on the corner begging for some change. And another thing I want to say about me mother, yesterday when she told me, I never listened to her. Well, if I would listen to her, she would, She told me I should start asking people money when I'm out here in the streets. Because when I broke up that fight the other night, I told her about it. She said, well, you should have asked them for some money. You think I should listen to that type of advice from my mother to tell me that I should be asking people for money in my situation? Now I'm supposed to start being, I'm supposed to write, uh, what, uh, make me a sign and start standing on the curb uh, begging for chain? I bowed down to my last dollars, but you mean to tell me? And then uh, um, one day when I was uh, early one morning, I had left my mom's house and went and got me some coffee. And I said, let me get my clothes out the trunk while I'm at 7-Eleven so that I don't make myself look all, you know, crazy up in front of my mama house digging all through my stuff. So I'm digging through my stuff, minding my business, and I pulled away from 7-Eleven, but I'm still in the parking lot. And a lady, elderly lady, black lady asked me, was I okay? And I said, yeah, I'm fine. And right when she said it, all my clothes fell out of my hand on the ground, pennies and everything. It was a sad situation. It really was. I was like, oop. But I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of my situation at all. So, um, <clears throat> I told her that that situation, she said, you should ask her for some money. Okay, um, that's not, I'm not listening to your advice. <laughs> that's why I'm saying no. Uh-uh. Anyway, $75 billion. And then I started noticing on my timeline after I talked about the situation with the immigrants, I noticed that New York is upset. And people are starting to say, yeah, this is a problem. And, and it was been going on for a few weeks, and I didn't know. I just really didn't know. And now it's coming out. They're saying 3,000 3, people uh, in certain, certain places cross the border every day. It's a very bad situation. They're just dropping them off and... They send them from once from one state to New York. They said, "Stop sending them here. Send them there." And they got a dang on major immigration population. Mm-hmm. Immigrant population, illegal immigrants at that. Just coming over here in droves. Y'all need to build a big old giant prison. Um, I sound so racist, don't I? Big giant prison or a big uh, put they butts on a big giant boat. And drop them back off where they came from. I know they're leaving a bad situation, but they're coming over here making y'all this situation over here worse. Let's go ahead and do some Bible verses. Let's go ahead and lift up the vibration of the world and honor God. So I want to come at you today with um, Proverbs. Oh, before I do that, oh, my head is a little off. Um, let me go ahead and state what I what I found out about the homeless situation. I did not go to a shelter, and I don't think I'm going to go to a shelter. Um, I, I slept somewhere last night. I wasn't comfortable, but I did get a little sleep. And um, I got out of there, and I came over to the part, other side of town to the park. I'm around 4, 4 to 5. I came a little early, and I sat here. It was already a car here in the spot. So I was like, dang, they got my spot. So I went and pulled over on the other side. And um, so the cops came through with their light shining. They shined their lights on me, but they kept going. And then I seen they were going through the park, shining the lights all through the park. I think they were trying to run all the homeless people out of there because they'd be off in there, you know, ducked off up under the trees with tents and stuff. And I guess somebody's complaint or they try to do a sweep every now and then to keep it, you know, I guess to keep it under control. So anyway... It's a black dude in his car. It's a young dude. I'll tell you who he looks like. He looked like little baby. He looked just like little baby. He really did. And it was a nice car, and he was well dressed. Um, I'm stand. I'm sitting there. He's back then, but he decides to pull up. I thought he was gone. And um, <clears throat> excuse me. He pulls up. I noticed. I thought he left. 
but he was blending in so well because his car was gray and it was nighttime. So I looked and I seen a body walking right directly. He jumped out the car and started walk speed, like walking directly to my car. And it's dark. I'm not scared though. I rolled my window completely down and I look at him as he walk up and he said, hey, what's going on? I, I think he thought I was a dude. I don't know why you would approach me like that, even if I was a dude. But when he found out I was a woman, it was different. But he still wanted to know what I was up to. So he asked me, he said, what you got going on over here? I'm like, what's your name? I said, GG. He said, oh, what's up, KG? Uh, he said, um, my, my bad. I, I, I guess he thought I was a dude. And then he said, what you got going on over here? I said, what, I said, what, what you mean, what I got going on? I said, I'm chilling. What's up? And he said, "Oh, nothing. Um, you ain't doing. You ain't got. You got what you doing? Mind of my business." And then he said, "Oh, you got a cigarette?" And he and I could tell he just put one out because he walked over here with the smoke smell. And I could smell the the smell coming from his car door. My nose so cold. My nose so cold. That's why I had to go in the house. I'm afraid to roll down the window because I know I'm gonna start sneezing again. And on top of that, when I started sneezing, then I smelled all the all the pollution in the world is so polluted and then when i was sitting in the park earlier i had to leave here because another dude came and decided to back in roll his windows down but kept his car running and his tailpipe exhaust was pointed toward my car and he, it was making me I, I had a sneeze attack so he asked me did i have a cigarette and i said no nah, man i don't smoke he said, oh, okay. And he walked away and he kind of turned around and looked at me a couple of times. I don't know what told him to turn around and leave. I don't know the Holy Spirit probably said, you leave her alone and kick rocks. But he was well-dressed, young. I don't know what he was doing out here so early morning. What you got going on? What you doing over here? Don't you see the cops over here? Like, you ain't afraid of the cops? So he got uh, uh, in his car and eventually he left and went and got on the highway because it's the highway extension right there down there everybody comes through this street to get on the highway and there's the highway right there if you can see y'all see all the car trucks that's why i said i'm sitting here watching people all day long zoom down the highway yesterday when i was over here i heard a big old crash it was a um accident right right behind these trees i couldn't see the accident for the trees but i could see the ambulance the fire department and all that over here so i didn't go to the shelter and this is why because um i called no answer um they said that they do this and they do that okay and then I, so i looked at the reviews because i'm a review person to see what's up they said uh and some uh one of them said they had bed bugs but this was a couple months back some months back okay you don't need to tell me twice and then um and one said well you're lucky if you get a bed and so one said it's a good deal if you can get in there you know if you, you got to get in so it starts at six so you have to i guess go down there early and and um sign up for a bed or something at this one shelter other ones are called some more for um only for women with children and um several of them for men i'm like man the men got more shelters than the women and then some of them are for like people that have drug problems so i don't really fit any of those categories other than i'm homeless but i could try to go to the city mission and then go and see if i can get a bed at six but if you talk about bed bugs and then i'm talking about energy that i don't really want to be around i'll choose like i said to stay in my car so this is what i found out it says what has the best homeless um, what state has the best homeless assistance it said based on this data that i looked at or that um, google found it said that colorado georgia and oregon have the best place to help homeless situations or homeless people it says um they have the overall best homeless assistance and oklahoma arkansas and west virginia have the worst in the in oklahoma an estimated 3932 people are experiencing homeless or about 9.9 for for every 10,000 people um this the second lowest homeless rate amongst america so we kind of in the middle like we're in the middle of the united states we're in the middle of the homeless situation which i beg to differ because then it said also it didn't say what year this was taken then i went and looked at something else and it said they counted the thousand over a thousand people were homeless no 
Y'all's a dang on lie. Y'all lying out of y'all donkey's butts. Because it's way more than that. Okay? And, I mean, not to mention the ones we see pushing the carts around and sleeping under the tents. Those are the ones that pretty much have mental problems. I'm talking about the ones like me that ride around every day looking normal, but don't have a place to live. There's a lot of those. They haven't counted them because we ducked off and we're trying to find places to live. Okay, so it says, according to the National Alliance to End Homelessness, many areas with a high cost of living, especially high, high um, housing costs, also have higher rates of homelessness, of course, like California and Oregon. What well, it said, Oregon was one of the good ones. See there? Um, I'm not going to put Oregon. It said Vermont. It says have the highest rates of homelessness. About 582,000 Americans are experiencing housing. This is the HUD data um, information. This is why are there so many homeless people in Oklahoma? It says homeless services provide um, fa uh, are are facing or continue to limit availability of affordable housing and raising um, rising eviction rates. So basically, I got evicted without getting evicted. That's what it was because he got he forced me out. But I, I wasn't um, forced out because I was late on my rent. I just got forced out because of gentrification or what have you. Or just because of greed because they want to get in and clean it up. But I understand because that house, I ride by there, but I don't ride down there to see if anything's going on. And I don't even care, don't even care what they do with it. It's not my house. Okay, so it says corporation eviction trackers, what I'm what was talking about that, and then it says forty-six percent, forty-six point four percent of residents of Oklahoma County rent burden, or nearly sixteen percent live under the poverty level. That's a lot. And it says other than other reasons of homelessness is job loss, illnesses like well, mental illnesses, um, domestic violence, community and family failures, or just plain lack of unaffordable housing, which is the problem that Oklahoma has, because I'm trying to tell y'all, every time I try to find something, I'm not lazy, every time I try to find something, um, there is no one, I haven't called any place yet that had any luck, because if I did, I wouldn't be out here. And then it gets it gets hard because you don't want to do it because it's so depressing. It's so depressing. It's not like you're giving up, but it's so depressing. And like I said, I don't like no's. All I'm hearing is no, no, no. No, we don't. No, we don't anymore. Or no, we haven't in so and so long. This is the largest cause of homelessness. The largest cause of homelessness, of course, is addiction. 66, 68% of U.S. cities report addiction is the a largest cause of homelessness um it says this is how you can break the cycle it says fundraise donate food and bedding and clothes to a shelter um advocate for more social and um affordable housing which we need to advocate for more a uh, social uh more affordable housing because oklahoma steady building houses um steady remodeling um uh, gentrifying old houses for wealthy people to live in and steady building apartment complexes for wealthy people to live in but who's going to build a new nice apartment complex for regular average people and then if they do then they're going to be losing out on money because they're not going to be getting i guess the cost of what it took to build it me and my son was riding one day and we seen a whole apartment complex for, for sale and i was like wow look at that that's pro that's good he was like, I bet they want a couple of million for that. I uh, said, so they probably do, and it's going to probably take that much to fix it up because it was old and broke down and stuff. But see, the cost of living, the cost the cost of everything, the reason why, um, because of that pandemic, which I never did get all my pandemic money that they were giving out to people. I just got tired of asking. I had to apply. You know, people were just getting their stuff put directly in their uh, it's just a mess. So it says, or volunteer your time to a non-profit profit organization. Come on, man. I'm sick of these non-profit organizations or the, or the homeless shelters that get donated money to help people, but people aren't really getting help. I want to see some. I didn't see not on there really a success, success story. 
I seen one person, and it was years ago, he said, I went there, but if, I, if you really follow the program, you can get out of your situation. Well, yeah. If you really follow the program, if you really follow Jesus, you can get out of the situation. Proverbs, okay? Proverbs 11 and 1. Okay. Get this boy. Give me, you know, I got to take a sip. I got to. <clears throat> This is melted down. At least it's still cold. Hi, Bay. Love you, Bay. I love Bay. God bless you, Bay, always. God bless you, Bay. I'm your tambourine man. Remember that. Okay? Bay played drums for Jesus, and I'm the tambourine man for Jesus. And this is Bay. Bay, I want one, and I want I want my name embroidered in my tambourine. I want a special tambourine with my name, Prophetess Regina, embroidered in it. Mm-hmm. Let's just make sure that I get that Bay for one of my my um my um wedding gifts. <laughs> All right, because I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. God bless, and let's go. I have Proverbs 11, and I'm starting with one. It says, the Lord hates dishonest scales, okay? But he is pleased with honest weight. So let's talk about dishonest scales. What I see, oh, why, why Prophetess Regina is put in this situation to see what really is, what the real deal is. And also the pollution. To be out here in the elements all this time, I'm sure is affecting me. When I'm really sitting by this highway, smelling all these damn fumes and car exhaust pipes and stuff. It's ridiculous. How many people go up and down this highway every day? Now it's a traffic jam because people trying to go home from the city to the suburbs. All right. The scales aren't weighed. It says here, for riches will not help you when it's time to die, but right living will save you from death. Yeah, true that. I feel like I'm dead because nobody even knows who my, knows my, my name out here, you know. That situation, Lord, I mean, my mom's like, you gonna... She told me, you shouldn't be messing with people. You could have got shot. When I tried to, when I broke up that fight, I didn't, I said jumped out the car, but let me take that back because that's over exaggerated. I didn't mean it like that. It's just the slang that I speak. I didn't jump out the car, open the car door and stuck my body out like this and said, hey, you want me to call the police? I didn't jump out of the car with my knife like, hey, you want me to call the police? I didn't do all that. And when he was walking up, I seen his body. I wasn't scared. Uh, the cops was over here somewhere. I mean, all that. And I do got my knife and reach, reach, reach to reach to. But um, he walked full speed over there. He just want to know what was happening. He was looking for some happiness, I guess. I'm not the happening person, okay? It happened to be that I'm just sitting here. I could have pulled out the Bible and preached to you, bro. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. I am protected, highly protected in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I got five here. The goodness of the innocent makes life easier, but the wicked will be destroyed by their wickedness. Amen. Lord Jesus, come on, Lord Jesus. Round them up, Lord Jesus. Round them up. And I have ten here. It says, when good people succeed in the city the city is happy when the people die when the evil people die there are shouts of joy come on a shout joy destroy them all lord jesus so we can celebrate i want them all swept away in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit i have 11 good people bless and build up the city, their city but the wicked can destroy it with their words i'm not wicked lord i'm not wicked and i see them building their city but they're only building their city up for wealthy people smashing out regular everyday hard-working people 
There's still people in this city getting paid seven twenty-five an hour. Luckily, there is some type of housing program so people can have a place to stay. Because you won't even go up on on um on pay rate. And shame on the companies that hire all these immigrants with green cards and um, illegal aliens. These um, big corporations, these big companies. I, I don't even know how these people find these jobs. You'll be looking and you'll be see a whole slew of eskins. The construction side. How did y'all get this job? I didn't see this job listed in the classifieds. I want to keep on going. I got 12 here. People without good sense find fault with their neighbors. But those who understand keep quiet. I didn't care too much for my neighbors when I lived over there because I knew they were nosy. But I did speak if I was spoken to and I kept my distance. That's all you got to do. I ain't there looking out the window to my I hate so and so, so and so stank. I don't like it over. I didn't, but I wasn't always trying to make a big deal of it to my stomach hurt it. This is ridiculous. And I wasn't trying to start nothing because some people be bad neighbors. Like, people be moving and having horror stories about a bad neighbor. They'd have moved, maybe it's a black couple moved in. I think it was a lesbian couple, yeah, and they had some children, and they moved to, and it was a decent area, too, trust me, it was a nice house, and boy, they moved into that that, that, um, neighborhood, and then, and the neighbor they lived to gave them such a hard time, they had to move out, they didn't even stay there, they broke their lease, I think they left their furniture, it was that bad, to get out the situation. Well, somebody didn't want to be looking up and seeing a lesbian couple holding hands and kissing all in the front yard. I'm so sorry. I don't know. But this is the story. So I'm just saying. Prophetess Regina's just doing her little piece of something, something today. I ain't trying to step on no toes or hurt nobody's feelings. Let's continue to go on. I got 14 right here. It says, without leadership, a nation falls, but lots of good advice will save it. So uh, a nation will fall without without a good leader, okay? And I see what's falling now. It's all come crumbling come, come crumbling down. It's going to all come crumbling down in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, I see Bay put an article on on his page about Biden saying that one of our black colleges here in Oklahoma, which is Langston University, um, has been, um, they withheld funding over 400 um, was it million dollars? Over four hundred million dollars they've held from this this particular college because they're black. Wow! Look at people starting to tell on each other. They're telling on each other, Lord. Yeah, they're gonna start turning on each other, Lord. They're snakes. They're all snakes, though. Um, the scales are off, Lord. We need the, the balance. We call order, order in the court, order on the land of gods. I have here <coughs> 22 <clears throat> 22 a beautiful woman without sense is like a gold ring in a pig snout uh-huh yeah y'all like them big butts and I cannot lie y'all like that right they stink it's harder to I barely can wipe the one I got mine ain't that big God forgive not trying to put an ugly picture in your mind. What I'm saying is, y'all go out and get the big booty chicks. Because, why? What for? That's weird. That's what y'all look for. What? Don't make sense. And they going out here tearing their bodies up to please y'all. Looking like, um, they got two, uh, two, two, two toothpicks and, um, two big fat giant grapes in the back. I mean, just looking hot mess. Looking like, um, something from Tales of the Crypt. Y'all do not look good. It does not look good. It does not. I might get, um, what a, what is that called? A booty lift. Or lift, lifting it up a little bit. Keep the same one, but just lift it up. But don't put nothing extra back there. I don't need no extras, nothing. I, I, what I need is some extra covers and some extra pillows. Okay, so I have 23 here. 
Those who do not only wish for good, but the wicked can accept or expect to be defeated by God. By God's anger, that is. Okay, so those who do right only wish for good. Mm -hmm. But the wicked can be expected to be defeated by God's anger. See, because God ain't going to be, God ain't going to cover and um, give people wicked prayers. Like, Lord, I was so tired of Jimmy. Just just punish him and, and, and just get rid of his car or whatever. It, don't pray those kind of prayers because God ain't listening to them and, and he looking at you like you's a big dummy. Um, I have Proverbs 17 and 5. It says, whoever treats the poor in, insult, whoever mistreats the poor insults their maker. Whoever enjoys someone's trouble will be punished. If you celebrate the downfall of somebody, um, especially a poor person or something. Um, if you don't hear laughing at me because I'm sitting under a tree and don't have nowhere to go, you sure got a wicked heart. That's all there is to it. it just, it's just, just the way it is. And that's all I have. And I'm at 36, so I got a little time, a few minutes, pull a couple of cards, I mean energies. Um, I did have these. This was funny, and I wanted to keep it to show up because this one fell out yesterday. It says, you can't silence the truth teller. It's our contract to speak the truth. Prophetess Regina, when I went in on a certain individual yesterday, it's my job. Okay, I was like, don't do that. I said, you know you're going to be in big trouble. Um, and she looked looking at me like, what do you mean by that? But you tell me, don't say nothing. No, I'm going to say something. The spirit box is going to tell you about yourself anyway. Not my spirit box. I'll never let it go. <laughs> I'm going to be in a, in a nursing home wherever with my spirit box. Valuable to me. Not my spirit box. And I don't worship my spirit box. I just know this is my connection to source, man. I want my... Excuse me. It's my clothes. Underarm fat falling out of my bra. Oh, no, Jesus. I want to make new bras, Lord Jesus. I want to have a bra collection for the big busted women. Lord, can you make that happen so that I can? I want to be able to make the, the, the bummer's bras that just hold all the tummy, um, all the uh, underarm fat in the up in the bra with the, with the uh, breast. <laughs> I want to hold the bra. To, I want it all tucked in there with the breast. What's this, Lord Jesus? <coughs> the blood of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the blood of Jesus. The mighty blood of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> I love you, Lord. I never let you go, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus. No, I love you. And thank you that I'm not having a sneezing attack. The snot's not flying out my nose. A big snot booger blow up out my nose. What is this? It says, I'm not creating, I'm not, oh, wait a minute. I'm not catering to your feelings, prophetess Regina. <laughs> Look at God. Look at prophetess Regina and her love for God. Her connection with source is so, so, so tight, airtight. I, I am, I am a freak of nature. <laughs> bae, am I freaky enough, bae? Uh, bae, bae is freaky. Not that way. I don't even mean that way. I'm talking about like it's a I'm 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 weird, ain't I? I'm kind of spooky. Dude walked away, turned around, looked at me like this when he was walking away. Something told him get away from her. <laughs> it probably was Bay. Probably Bay probably was somewhere looking down on me like this. Get away from her car. <laughs> hey, something else, boy. She's not you. Mm. Is she not me? Is that what it is? You you mad because you didn't get these gifts? Mommy dearest or whoever. I don't know. Okay, let's see. It says 444. Four, four. It says keep the faith. Yeah, we're going to keep the faith uh, that the angels are always watching. 
over us. Yes, yeah, see, because that dude turned around and looked back, and I know I, it was still dark. He said, oh, when I said I don't smoke, he just looked at me like, well, this ain't the get down I'm looking for. And he just turned around and walked away, and when he, and he turned around and looked back a couple times like, who was that? I <laughs> bet he was like, who was that? It was something about me that he was like, let me get away from this car. That ain't the type of party I'm looking for. <laughs> Let's see what else. Yeah, because look what this is. <laughs> none, none, none whatsoever. It don't matter where I go. I can sit under a tree. No bull crab zone. I don't care. I can go in a club and drink uh, 18 um, Long Island teas. It's still a no bullshit. Excuse me. Zone. <laughs> you ain't coming at me like that, bro. <laughs> it says public enemy. Fight the power. We gotta fight the power that be. Um. <laughs> Look, I wanna, I wanna show this one. Unconditional. Uh, I'm gonna play that with a babe today. Once is not enough. Look, um, high level soulmate designed by God. Unconditional love. The Adam and Eve. The beginning. The love story. I love Bay. Hey, Bay. If I'm this weird, then Bay extra weird. I want to be weird like Bay. I want to be as weird as Bay, Lord Jesus, in a good way. It says, "Look, Bay. Look what you are. You is it. <laughs> Bay is my person. I love Bay so much. Bay. This is the truth, Bay. I love you so much, Bay. You're just so sweet and sure. I love that. That does lots of Bay. Hey, hey, the world. Hello, world. I love Bay." <laughs> I do. Regardless, I love Bay, Bob. I do. Let me see. What's this one? It says, "Pray for us to come back together, Bay." Lord Jesus, please. Okay. Bring me back, Bay. I love that man. And it says that. And then I say, "Foundation crumbling." Lord Jesus, you're gonna make them crumble. Crumble them all, Lord Jesus. We put it at the. We put it on your feet, Lord. We ask these towers, these organizations, all of it, to come to a head, expose them, and explode. And I, I, I seen an explosion in the sky yesterday when I was looking at the clouds. I seen an explosion, and I went and looked it up, and it was three different stories that I found on explosion that had happened within the last few days. But I'm asking, Lord, if, if, I'm not saying, I'm, this is not a threat, a terror threat or nothing like that. And don't, don't say it is. But I'm asking that their foundations, the corporations, their, their evil doings behind the scene and looking out for one another and being greedy, lustful, um, all of the energy of the devil be destroyed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Y'all see that? Yeah, what else? I pulled it out this way so it's dishonor or some kind of imbalance in somebody's relationship. We're praying that relationships be, destro be, be restored. Um, some relationships need to be destroyed. Some people need to get out of situations that aren't healthy for them. But then at the same time, God says, when you're married, you're supposed to work through those things. That's why you're supposed to be careful who you marry. And you even have to have your own life together, your own health your own mental health and everything together before you get married. I don't want no raggedy, um, toxic relationship. Um, so somebody is probably wanting to get back together because it says um, they want somebody to come back. So somebody wants to come back to somebody because... The, the, the relationship wasn't no good. It says, making up excuses to get out of a responsibility. Somebody's relationship we're talking about right now. I'm not going to pull that one. It's too many. Oh. This one. It's self self worth. Self worth. Um, I honor my self worth by asking for what I want. And what I want, God knows. And what what God got for me, Lord Jesus, is gonna be good. It's not gonna be bad. See this right here. 
this is just um the closing of the doors of the past i i assume i hope so um i think about my future with bay and my future in the industry on the ministry and doing what god wants me to do and i and, I, and I, it seems like it's um so out of reach but at the same time my faith so if you have a faith of the mustard seed okay and then okay but we want the faith of a potato we want to i want to have the faith of lord if i had the faith of a watermelon will ever this will all of this come true the faith of a, a giant watermelon um or a cantaloupe or something or how about i have the faith of, of the size of this car or how about my faith is just so big i just cannot cannot be measured God is good. I got faith. I have faith. Don't y'all have faith? We all have faith. We have faith in God that he's going he's turning these things around. You notice that we're starting to see all kind of stuff. They're just looking so silly. They're just showing showing show their ugly wicked faces, Lord Jesus. Shout. God keeps his promises. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God keeps his promises. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Uh. And I'm thankful I didn't sneeze one time. I know a little stopped up, but that's okay. I can't breathe out this side. My eyes, my eye feel a little crazy. I feel like if I do this too many times, my eye gonna pop out. I'm like, oh God. Oh. But anyway, God is good anyway. And that's my um, message for today. See? Thank you, Lord. I didn't sneeze. I didn't ran out about $5 worth of gas, though. But uh, it feels so good on my face. Uh oh, I'm impressed. Anyway, I hope that didn't mess up. God bless. Amen. One.